Hello, hello. Hello everybody, this is the Greek Johannes speaking. I'm doing another live stream. This one's unscripted while I play some Rammstein in the background. You might not be able to hear it because it's not that loud. Uh, so what's been going on recently, you know? We've seen, uh, I made a video about uh, Navalny's death and uh, my conclusion was that, you know, the Western services did that. The Western uh, secret services killed him. And then people in the comment section, they said, well, you know, uh, his wife visited him on Valentine's Day, gave him flowers and medicine. At least that's what I read in the comments. And I think, well, that might be feasible because he was too pretty for him. <laughs> the wife Navalny was a pretty woman. And you uh, you know how that goes. Secret Service agent plays the fake wife and then uh, kills the asset when they no longer need it to stir up emotions in the in in Russia, you know, they've been training to do the color of revolution in Russia for such a long time. And it turns out it didn't even work very well. Nothing happened. I think the Western powers are quite depressed at this fact that the Navalny death didn't really do anything. The Russians were what? Supposed to uh, storm the Kremlin, but they didn't do that. So what's up, man? I'm having a bit of a random chat here. I didn't really prepare a topic, but I'm, usually I'll think of some things to say, right? This is just another thought stream, live stream. <clears throat> so I was, I was talking about Navalny and the implications thereof. You see that the West is running out of options. At least that's my impression of it. I mean, I live in the West, though I live in Western Europe. But I have the impression that uh, the Anglo-American Empire, they couldn't supply Ukraine with enough bombs, weapons, bullets and grenades and so on to strike at Russian forces. So they've been defeated at the battlefield. Eastern Ukraine has fallen into Russian hands. Okay. And now they wanted to do the color revolution thing with Navalny, but it didn't work. So they killed Navalny. Nothing happened. The Russians didn't really care. You know, the West should love Russia. They're both European. Yeah. So random commenter asks me why I hate Somali. I don't even know what that is. You know, goodbye. So uh yeah we're both the, the white russians obviously in northwestern russia they're obviously yeah european just like us and that is the that is the whole matter i went to an event today that was about this topic about uh, the ukraine russia conflict and a professor from england notably gave the argument that well you know this was a really stupid war ex especially for europe europe lost in terms of um uh, uh, the sanctions the sanctions all backfired onto europe western uh european um, industries are broken breaking down germany is screwed germany no longer has access to the uh, to the uh, russian resources and gas and energy and so the choice is europe europe has to choose and this is very very important to understand europe is going to make the decision whether we stick with the security partner that is the usa really or do we switch to the energy partner that is Russia? This choice will have implications. If we choose the USA, Europe will be poor and cold and freezing. If we choose Russia, we will be wealthy, but we will be at war with the United States. Can you imagine another war, but now between the USA and Europe? You know, those are our choices. And personally, I already know the choice that we should make is we should choose with Russia, the Russian resources, mind you. Uh, this doesn't mean Russia will rule us. Of course not. We have 700 million people. They have 150. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if we put our minds to it with new leadership in Europe, we can create what I envision as the Christian Sparta or a collection of European republics, Christian republics, based on morality and the principles of virtue to strive to be our best and that we could use the access to Russian resources to build that kind of new Holy Roman Empire, heavily religiously inspired, of course, with a new, a new spiritual vigor for, especially for men to be men again, so that we will venture out, we will become extroverts again, rather than these introverts that we've been for for such a long time now. But we will have to deal with the American, um, the Anglo-American Empire, who will want to destroy us. In that scenario. 
um, my immediate hint, my my immediate gut feeling is that the Anglo Americans they specialize in specialize in naval warfare. They have their uh, carrier ships also to project project their uh, their aircraft, their air power. But what if we would not do this? What we what if we choose not to fight the Anglo American Empire at sea, but rather force them to fight us on land? That w fight would then take place in places like Germany and France. It may not be fun. But we would destroy them. And that's my whole point. You lure them into an ambush. You lure them into a trap. Now, that's impossible, you see. Uh, someone asks, uh, why can't we have a balance with both, with the USA or with Russia? The, the, the thing is, if we align with Russia, then Europe and Russia would become an all-powerful empire at the expense of the USA. But the US elites aren't going to allow that. They're going to fight back. So they're going to bomb our cities, like London, Berlin, Paris, would, would all be destroyed in that scenario. So if we, but if we Europeans are, however, willing to accept the loss of our big cities, then we can either choose to rebuild them later or choose not to have them anymore and have a very different kind of life, which is what I probably prefer anyway. I don't really like these big cities. Americans are thoughter. What do you mean? Tougher than Europeans? I don't think so. Yeah. Speaking facts. Exactly. What do you think of Italy and Giorgio Maloney? Maloney is a controlled opposition, though. Fake. All right. So that's my scenario, right? Imagine us in Europe making this decision to accept access to the Russian resources. We will end up in a conflict with the Anglo-American world, with the U.S. leadership mostly. Uh, this is a bit of a problem because almost all of the prime ministers in Europe, all these political leaders, they serve the American class the anglo class so to speak and that means we don't really have um that much you know we don't have leadership if europe would somehow be able to cultivate new leadership and i mean in the next five years no more than 10 years it needs to happen in the next five years because nato projects that the war against russia will last 20 years i project that nato is going to lose that and russia will either simply uh stand tall or even push back and take poland maybe at which at which point all is lost anyway if Russia manages to take Poland, it's all, it's all over. It's just game over. Uh, but we as Europeans need to understand that our own, for in terms of our people, right? If we look at our people, the Slavic peoples, Germanic peoples, Celtic peoples, Romance peoples, if, if we put our Nordic peoples, if you will, if we put our peoples first, it would be best, in our interest, it would be best to deal with the Russians rather than with the Americans. Because the Americans are going to continue shoving down transhumanism, LGBT, diversity, mass immigration, Islam, all these things that we'd never asked for and never wanted. We won't be able to, uh, to escape from, the, from mass African immigration, like hundreds of millions of Africans coming in. And that's a bit odd, because why would you even care to protect Europe against Russia, but at the same time, you want to mass immigrate 100 or 200 million Africans into Europe? Like, are you crazy? Are you crazy? London today has a 13% African population, but they are responsible for 70% of the knife crime and rapes. You don't want that. You don't want more of these people. They're, they're, this is going to be such, such a hell on earth. I just don't get it. Why would you want to defend Europe against Russia, but you don't mind replacing Europeans with Africans? What that suggests to me is that these ruling classes, these elites, they only care about money. And what they're protecting is not the people. They're protecting their industry and their economy and their finances and their gold and their silver. They don't care at all about the people. And I am the other way around. I care about the people. I want our people to become physically and mentally healthy and strong again. And you don't get that if we s stay with these, these Atlantises, you know, these pro-American, pro american pro Pro, uh, pro British people. Mind you, the American people are not the problem, nor are the British people. They're not the problem, right? The problem is the leadership, the Anglo American elite who are really in charge. Someone explained to me that the real leadership in the Western world is actually in London, right? The London elite. Let's just call them that way. And they simply care about money, their financial power, no matter what the people look like. I mean, look, if you're a sheep farmer, you couldn't care less if the wool comes out white or black. But if you are a white sheep and your people are being and your sheep are being replaced with black sheep, that's a very different attitude, right? It's a very different situation here. Okay, I'm going to go through your questions now because I'm doing a sort of a 
a sort of a on off the cuff on the fly little uh, little thing here. I was baptized Roman Catholic, so yeah, I support a sort of Christian revival. I want to build turn Europe into a Christian Sparta, a moral empire. Yeah, their primary weapon is political assassination, but actually the Western powers, their primary weapon is narratives. They control the media and they are able to spin stories that normal people, the normies, the civilians, they really believe all that shit. They believe if the media would tell you that aliens are now real, they will believe it. You know, I want Americans and Europeans to work together, but that's a bit of a problem. See, the American leadership will never really allow it unless they want to, you know, unless by destroying Europe. You're in any in any alliance now between Europe and the USA, Europe will be completely destroyed and humiliated. We will be the slaves. We will be a literal slave colony to the United States. If you want your people to live free, you're going to have to accept that we will have to cut loose from the US. But I, that does not mean that we are going to ban American white Americans from coming back to Europe to help us defend Europe. I would welcome white uh, Americans who want to come back home, you know. Like I said, the American people aren't the problem. It's always the leadership. We understand that. But the leadership in the U.S. will not allow a wealthy, strong Europe to exist alongside a wealthy, strong Russia. So they're going to try to destroy Russia by using European soldiers, right, to, to try to break up Russia into several other nations and steal their wealth. I don't think it's possible. I think Russia, now backed by China and Iran, they're going to beat us. Oh, my screen switched out. I don't know what happened. All right, I was gonna, I was gonna go, I was gonna go through your comments here, but there are so many. I need to like uh, pop this out for a moment because I'm using my desktop, my TikTok Live desktop app, so it gives me a little more space to look at things. But okay. All right, here I was. Blah blah. blah. Are you Christian? Yeah. So I want. Yeah. So America should become the new Rome. Yeah, be careful what you wish for. It might become late stage Rome. I think you're on your way down collapsing really. You you're going to have you should read up on what the Romans were doing at near the end of it. They were raping kids in broad daylight. That's where you're headed. Ooh. All right great replacement is being ushered in yeah yeah that is what they're doing and that's what i just mentioned i just said that it's odd that the nato powers desperately want to defend europe against russia while at the same time they don't seem to mind at all that our peoples are being replaced with immigrants from africa the arab world and so on they don't care about this at all they only care about their economic interests these elites and when i say elites it's like rockefeller rothschild you know those kinds of elites like these these old billionaire families they don't care about this but we should care about ourselves and that's why i want to create a sort of europe where we invest in our own people again where we make our own people strong again right what do you think europeans should do european leaders should do to russia they should have diplomacy in place so that we can have access to the russian resources the gas the energy the oil and uh, raw materials and so on and basically together we would rule the eurasian continent you know your eurasian empire this is like in that book 1984 by george orwell you have eurasia versus oceania oceania that's the atlantic anglo-american world and eurasia that's europe with russia largely so <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, someone says, I don't care if you mix. I am pro-Western and European. I think it does matter. I'm mixed race. I'm half Celtic, half Germanic. But that's about as mixed as we should get, you know. Like, it would be weird for us to have half African, half Asian children uh, walking around here everywhere and, and their own people are gone or something. You know, that's no good. So, have you seen articles on Russia preparing to deploy an anti-satellite-based nuclear weapon system? Uh, anti-satellite-based nuclear weapon. Yeah, they're going to destroy satellites for communication for sure, but I'm not so sure about nuclear weapons. I did a whole podcast about nuclear weapons, which is on my YouTube at The Great Johannes, where I go into this book called The Death Object. 
by a certain Japanese author who claims that uh, nuclear weapons are a hoax. So, of course, rockets are real, big rockets are real, big rockets with big bombs are real, but nuclear bombs, like in the movies, you have like one rocket with one bomb that blows up all of New York City, killing 20 million people. That is probably not real. But if, if they say the Russians are doing this, then they're going to do this to everybody. Then, then that means they're going to try to do it. Yeah, yeah Biden is demanded, you know. <laughs> Why do falling empires go crazy? Though? Well, you know, you ask me. Um, look, at, look at the United States. They have the transgender, the LGBT. They have angry black people taking over the cities and ripping, ripping off companies and so on. You know, there's a new mayor in Illinois, uh, an African-American woman, and she shuts down every business that doesn't want to support her financially or support her uh, her mayor bid you know if that's how if that's how you rule then you're basically a third world country at this point you're doing it the way they do it in africa so that's what they always said you know then don't talk to me so What's the solution to immigration? We Europeans, the white people, need to become very religious about our self-defense and survival. And we need to have some kind of a spiritual connection here. Spiritual in the sense that we become intolerant. That we know that we have the right to exist, that there is no doubt about this anymore. No more, no more uh, making room for others. No, we've given enough. Enough is enough. It's done. We're done giving. We're here to start taking again. You know, like that old Spartan uh, adagio, you know, take from them everything, give them nothing. Like, is that from the movie 300, you know? Give them nothing, take from them everything. That's how we should be. We should be, we should be Spartan about our survival. Sorry, we should become Spartan about our survival, you know? So, let me see. I'm going to answer more questions if I have here. Like, do you believe the only way to stop this disaster is to establish a Christian land and expel, yeah, yes. Europe should become deeply religiously Christian, spiritual. We will look a little bit to the occult and to magic and mysticism in order to find there, find there the strengths that we need in order to survive. Because this isn't a game anymore. This is a, this is a battle for our survival. Once our boomer generation dies out, white people will have no more electoral majorities in any Western country. We will be minorities, electoral minorities in every one of our countries. We will no longer be able to win in any elections. You know what that means? That's the setup for genocide. Just look at South Africa. We will have to understand that democracy to us is dead. We, can't, we simply cannot use democracy anymore to vote for our survival. All we can do now is to prepare, you know, Parabellum, you know, civis pacem parabellum. You know, if you want peace, prepare for war. Let me see. It's like Nietzsche said, you take away religion, the foundation of your society goes. Yeah, if he said that, he's absolutely true. At this rate, there will only be 300 of us less left. Yeah, more than enough, I'd say. By the way, that really happened. The, the battle at Thermopylae, at the hot gates, there's a place in, in uh, Greece uh, where they found Colonos Hill. I'll type it out so you can Google it. Colonos Hill. They found there at Colonos Hill, it was a site in 1939, an archaeologist found there. Uh, I even know the, the name of the archaeologist was Spiridon Marinatus. I don't know how to spell it, but this guy found there Persian arrows, like hundreds and hundreds of Persian arrows, proving that the battle at the, at the hot gates had actually taken place there. It was not a myth. They really stopped the Persian hordes from entering Europe then. We need another Charles Martel and another Leonidas and another uh, Skander Bey, the uh, Albanian who stopped the Turkish from advancing. And we need another John Sobieski III, that's the Polish warlord who, who helped uh, the Germans defeat the Turks at the, the, uh, the siege of Vienna, or the Battle of Vienna. And we need more of those. We need, uh, oh, let's see if I can remember a few. Uh, no, <laughs> off the top of my head, no. Uh, there, there are many such brave men that we need. We need a lot of them. We need Vlad Tepes, exactly. That's another one. And... 
We need a whole bunch of them. We need brutal men with vision and clarity in their head to know what to do, all right? A new Caesar, an age of new Caesars, yeah. Or at least we laid a foundation for something like this, yeah. Let me take a sip. Uh. Otto von Bismarck, exactly, the German unifier, he did the right thing. He had diplomatic ties with Russia to access their resources. He was building railroads through Iraq to access cheap oil and access to the uh, sailways to India. He was making Germany strong. But then in the Second World War and the First World War, uh, the Anglo came in and they destroyed the railroads and they destroyed... They built the Iron Curtain, so to speak, to avoid Russia from ever aligning with uh, German uh, industry. How can we stop corruption in our governments? Uh, a whole lot of arrests arrests will have to be made. You can't you can't literally can't lead, let these people go around anymore. No. Yeah, the West doesn't have any leaders anymore. Thanks for watching, everybody. By the way. If you want to subscribe to my newsletter, www.jmk.info, there you can. Uh, what's your opinion on Anders Breivik? Did you read his manifest? Yes, I do remember reading it at the time. He's a bit of a woman hater, and I, and I don't agree with that because you can't you can't have any political success without the support of the women. Uh, if you're a woman hater, you're you're watching the wrong show. We need to have. You know, Breivik wrote in his manifest that he wanted to castrate himself. This is not the right way. We need to be a bit more sane in the head than this nonsense, right? Do you do one-on-one -on -one debates or conversations? Yes, sometimes. A few days ago, I did an interview with Sofia Aragona. The interview, by the way, if you want to rewatch the interview I did with Sofia Aragona, it's on YouTube now at The Great Johannes. Uh... And she's, she spoke about a lot of things. She's one of those rare, super intelligent women on the right. Uh, yeah, that was that conversation really had my brain zinging for, for a whole day before I could really process what, what we did. I think it was uh, an important milestone there. No, I don't live in Sweden. Are you expecting a genocide to occur in South Africa? If the blacks are capable of it, yeah if they're capable of organizing themselves. But then again, the farmers, they've got farm equipment and they've got guns and shit, so they might be able to defend themselves. You know, the way I see South Africa, the, the whites there, you know, you know, you have to like, you have to like, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I speak the truth, dude. Sam, probably I speak the truth. So yeah, of course I'm Dutch. Ik ben Nederlands, yeah. I also do Dutch live streams on my Dutch channel, which is not here. You'll, you'll find my Dutch channel somewhere on uh, whatever, you know, on TikTok, right? So I was talking about the genocide in South Africa. Yeah, it's wholly, wholly possible, but you need to be able to defend yourself, you know? The uh, the communists there, the black communists, they definitely want, they literally say, kill the boar, kill the boar. They want to kill the whites there. But then again, you know, I already suggested that if shit hits the fan, the white Afrikaners should have the right to return to Europe. We will need them. We will need them and the white Americans and other whites from other colonies. They're all welcome back to Europe in order to defend Europe. When our boomer generation dies out, we need them. We would welcome them back, absolutely, for sure. How can we take, how can we make Europe if we don't even have weapons? Yeah, well, fire it up. We will have to do whatever we can to fire up our industry, our, our military industry, industry. But if we have diplomatic ties to Russia, we will have access to weapons industry anyway. Um, the point is only, I already spoke about this earlier, but the point is how, how will the USA respond if we make ourselves independent from the US? They are going to go completely nuts. These people are so hungry, so hungry for uh, world domination. They are not, they're just not going to, uh, 
tolerate our independence. You know, I, I know um, I was talking about this earlier today already, this morning. Um, you know, um, in the past, the United States told you about aliens from outer space, right, who would invade the world. And then the Americans, right, the Americans would, they would be the ones capable of fighting the aliens. And the reason they tell you the story about the aliens is because they wanted the whole world to believe that Americans would be able to defend the whole world against aliens and everybody should support the Americans, right? It's, it was meant as propaganda to try to get the rest of the world to support them. But they've changed the story from aliens from outer space into something like interdimensional beings from the space between the space. <laughs> Interdimensional beings, that's such a strange concept. People can't wrap, wrap their heads around it. Normal people won't be able to do so. Um, but you see why they do it. Now it's all about being interdimensional, about joining forces together, right? You know what that means? The fact that they changed this propaganda shows you that the United States used to be strong in the 1980s. They would have been able to fight aliens from outer space, but they're no longer strong. And now they need African immigrants and Arab immigrants, and they need all the, all the countries to help them out. They can't do it alone anymore. The United States has become weak. And I just realized this, that the United States, the United States in the 1980s, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He didn't need friends, he had success. Today, the United States is an old Arnold Schwarzenegger. He no longer has success and he has no friends, right? And so he's dying. And that's, that's the metaphor for the USA. Uh, how would you feel about white Americans repatriating, repatriating themselves back to Europe? Yes, well, I prefer white American immigrants to, you know, Africans and Arabs flooding our cities. And we're going to need people, young men, you know, willing to, uh, you know, we have a problem in Europe called, what do we do about the big cities? Our big cities are increasingly full of, you know, black and brown people, whereas the suburbs and the countryside are still white. So we have these, these brown, black enclaves in the heart of Western Europe. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? You know, I say surround the cities, cut the water and, and the electricity and deal with it. So looking at Agenda 2030, what's your point of view on that? I don't know. Agenda 2030, that's just some, you know, United Nations World Economic Forum fantasy made up stuff, you know. They can make stuff up all they want, but they don't have the people to execute these plans. It's just not going to work. It's like the digital idea, the digital digital idea and your, your digital bank account and so on. Um, in Eastern Europe, lots of people don't even have bank accounts yet. Germany is absolutely unprepared to do digital, electronic uh, everything. They can't do it. They can't, they, they can't go digital. digital. They, don't, they don't have the capacity right now because they're cut off from Russia, you know. Farms are being taken away from the Boers. Well, good luck with that. You know, they've done that in Zimbabwe. And this is so funny. I had all these black people on my TikTok comment section and I explained to them, look, hey, you know, they did this in, in Zimbabwe. They took the farms away from the white people and then you starved like three, three or four million Zimbabweans just starved because of it. And then Mugabe, when he was still alive, he had to beg the white farmers to come back and they did. The white farmers came back and they got their land back and they started farming again to save the Zimbabweans who couldn't do any farming. Because you know what happened? You know what happened when they took the farms from the white people in Zimbabwe, right? And they gave them to the black people. Can you guess what happened? The black people stripped the farm equipment for, for parts and they sold those parts on the market for beer, for, for alcohol. And that was it. <laughs> and then they just started starving because nobody was doing any farming anymore. I mean, this is pointless, isn't it? Yeah, Rhodesia Bush War too. A bunch of bunch of young guys wearing khakis fighting, you know, seven million of them. Uh, someone says, I see a big contrast in the type of comments on your Dutch and English live streams. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> This one is more intelligent, right? The English, my English comment section is, uh, there's a lot more smart people who have,
like something of value to contribute. But in my Dutch channel, it's all about everybody's trying to insult me and put me down. That's one of the reasons why I don't like don't like my own people very much anymore. <laughs> That's a great remark, uh, Lelouch Victoria. Yeah. No, this is serious. Like this has been going on for years now. The Dutch people who comment on my videos in Dutch, they are so nasty, always put downs, always insulting me. This and that, they're always just personal ad hominem insults, right? And then I go over here in my English section, and it's like, hey, friends, <laughs> F R E N S, right? Far right ethno nationalist. My friends are over here, yeah. yeah. Even in even in Morocco, they have too many immigrants, or yeah. But also in Morocco, they also have too many black immigrants now. So what are you going to do with them, you know? I loved Eugene Terblanche's uh, speaking style, by the way, this African, uh, South African Boer guy, Afrikaner. He had a great speaking ability. You should listen to his speeches, even if you can't understand it. But this man had this powerful roar in his voice. Yeah. So how can Central Europe realign itself with Russia after 200 years of being at odds with it? Well, we have no choice in the end. In the end, we will have to realign. I mean, it's not going to be that difficult. I mean, Polish language is very similar to uh, Russian. Ukrainian is similar. There's Slavic influences in Bulgarian and so on and so forth. I mean, it is only natural that that is your mother culture anyway, the Slavic culture. I'm not familiar with The Great Taking by D. Rogers Webb, but I'll, I'll make a little note of that, The Great Taking. Check it out sometime because I, re I read a lot. Is this a book? Because I, I read a lot of books, so I'll just check that out at some point. So, uh, here, wait. I have a lot of comments. I'm trying, trying to go. I'm trying to go through the backlog of comments here. So I'm a bit of a, giving you a bit of a delayed. Uh, all right. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm going to skip a lot of comments. I'm sorry, I can't, can't answer all of them here. You know, may I ask, does Revival of the West contain much content regarding World War II history? No, not really. My book, Revival of the West, is really about deconstructing the idea for the global open society. That's by, um, you know, the idea by Henry Bergson and George Soros. And I take that, I basically take it apart and show you that it's nonsense and what we really need is simply nationalism. Uh, and I do give my my view on diversity, immigration, on Islam, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that might be useful. Why do you think the Dutch are less acceptant of your ideas, though? Because they're 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 more childlike. The the media in the Netherlands keep people really really dumb and uninformed. Like ninety percent of Dutch people say they really believe the mainstream news. So that tells you everything. They're just childlike. They're children, but they're kept that way. They're made that way. You know. Right, right, right. So it, n it never made sense as a student of history how we've been okayed into globalism. Yeah. yeah, it's been imposed upon us, you know, the same way that the European Union was imposed upon us as well, you know. <laughs> the Dutch have to return to eating their politicians, yeah. Yeah, the fact that nationalism is regarded as a bad thing is insane. I could explain that a little bit. Why do globalists hate nationalism so much? In a nationalist system, you actually care about your people. You're going to invest in your own people rather than in immigrants or in people abroad, right? So, but then you have these, these globalists. How do they make money? Well, mercantilism. Global trade is how they make money. It means they get stuff for cheap from India and they sell it for a lot of money to people living in the USA, for example. All right? Uh, that can't go on forever anyway, but... Um, the idea is that they are, they deliberately, the globalists deliberately want to undercut your own people in your own country. So if you, ha this happened in Britain, for example, the Irish used to produce a lot of grain for the UK until the British merchants started getting their grain from, from the Hindu farmers in India who could produce it a lot cheaper. And you know what happened then? The Irish famine happens and the Irish simply starved because the, the, the British elites just couldn't care less about the Irish anymore. If they could get their grain for cheap from the Hindus in India, they would just let the Irish starve. They only cared about money. And those are the sort of people who rule the West nowadays. They don't care about us. 
uh, colonizing the galaxy is a bit too far-fetched. You know, I was thinking of maybe we can start doing races around Venus with sails, sail ships, those solar sails. That would be interesting. Let's start there before we can do anything else, man. Because there, there might not be anything useful there anywhere nearby, right? People say that we can't even pass through the Van Halen, uh, the Van Allen uh, radiation belt anyway. So let's try that first. Yeah, Europe was entirely built and advanced before globalism. Yeah, because like I said, nation states, national, nationalist people, they invest in their own people. So those people become very competent and virtuous and, and talented and so on because the, the leadership cares about that. They want their people to succeed. Just like Israel today is a nationalist state and they care about their own people. It's just that we in Europe no longer care about our own and we should. Yeah, the Dutch have to return to ER. I already read that. Yeah, hang the, <laughs> hang the globalists, take their profits, make them eat shit, you know. I live in Scotland and people call themselves nationalists, but I have nearly no nationalist ideas. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe they just like Scotland, right? As long as they have their flag, but it goes a little further than that. Nationalism in simplest terms is that you are willing to support your people and that you expect to be supported by your people. That's nationalism. It's not really that strange. <clears throat> the US government has anti-gravity machines. Wow, I don't believe that. That's probably fake. <clears throat> the way forward for the existing global economy, political instability and technology, it's going to collapse. It's going to fall apart. The question is only what choice will Europe make? Will we side with the USA and lose our wealth? Or will we side with Russia and lose the US friendship and protection? You know, I don't know about geoengineering. I, I have read something about climate Marxism. You know what that is? They want to make the climate equal everywhere. So that, for example, the, the temperatures, say the climate you have in Belgium, they want that everywhere. So they're trying to do geoengineering for this because they want to make everybody so equal it has to be the same. You know? <clears throat> but, but, but it's not possible. You know, look, keep in mind a lot of things that these globalists say and want is their own imagination. They want a lot of things. That doesn't mean they will make them happen. People won't go along with it. And the technology doesn't work. <clears throat> Take, for example... Um, uh, wind energy, you have these massive uh, wind farms uh, on land and on sea. On land, I found out that these wind farms are not profitable. They're too complicated to build them. And because of, you, you know, because you have to drive farmers off their land and so on. And they kill birds, right? And then you have these wind farms at sea and they kill the whales and the dolphins, apparently. But they're also not profitable. It turns out wind energy is not profitable and it's not useful because wind energy comes in gusts. Duh, it's wind. It comes in gusts and the electricity network is not fitted to uh, tolerate like massive loads of energy and then all of a sudden nothing again. The whole electric grid in the Western world was built for rather st stable inputs and outflows flows of electricity. And it's very, very hard to... Uh, <clears throat> to build batteries for it so to speak where you can like uh, imagine a nation like the netherlands have a battery to store its energy and that would be ludicrous it's just not possible either we stick with uh oil and gas for the next few centuries or western economies are just going down you know it's like i said these globalists they want a lot of things but that doesn't mean it's going to work Israel is nationalist, yeah. They're racist and nationalist. Yeah, the Biden administration is out of control. So much fentanyl being brought in. Yeah, you know, the fentanyl that may be a sort of revenge from uh, China. A lot of the fentanyl is actually grown and produced in China. And China allows the export to the USA for drug dealing. And the thing is, it's an opioid, right? So have you heard of the opium wars? The British Empire used to make the Chinese addicted to opium so that the Chinese 
because they were addicted, were forced to surrender their gold and their silver to the British in exchange for the addiction. Now it's like China is trying to do their having some revenge here by selling fentanyl to the U.S. Americans. I, th I really think it's, uh, it's part of a war they're waging. But a lot of Western thinkers just don't seem to get this. They, th they think of war in terms of bullets and bombs, penetrative weapons, right? Spears and so on, knives, bayonets, and rockets and missiles. But the Chinese, they wage war by poisoning the West. I think the Chinese are actually poisoning um, us with fentanyl and with, they're supporting the LGBT, obviously, castrations. You know, they're waging war by other means that Western leadership is even too stupid to recognize. It's very dangerous. They want globalism in the West specifically because we're their income. Yeah, sort of. We, the Western white middle class still has a lot of savings. And as long as we have money in this sense, as long as our middle class have money, they will want to... Uh, Parasite off of that and have us surrender it and w by by all means. Yeah, uh, you know, someone says I don't think blah blah the goal is money, but sometimes something much more sinister. You should read um, on Jewish religion, like the the book of um, uh, Moses de Leon called the Book of Zohar, and that book is about fusing uh, two gods together into a transgender god and so on. It is about something more sinister. It's about, if you dive into this, the Kabbalism and so on, it's about fusing uh, all sentient minds into one giant immutable God mind. You can read about this in uh, Philo Judeus, for example, and in Maimonides and in uh, Moses ben Maimon, Moses de Leon. Yeah, I've, I've actually studied these, these Jewish thinkers like a decade ago because uh, I wanted to know how they really think. And it's all about... Fusion, fusion of minds. This is why they, why Zuckerberg, who's also Jewish, they built Facebook because you know that's the first step. And then it goes into the metaverse, and then it goes into uh, the virtual reality, right? And everything has to become virtualized so that you can upload your mind when you die into the computer and live on, right? It, it's all about creating a god mind. A god mind, I think they see that as a sort of machine to wield power over the universe or something. They believe, what? Well, wait, they believe the following. You know, Christians, what they believe? They believe that there was a god, a, a male deity, God, who created the universe, right? And these Jewish Zoharians, they believe in the exact opposite. They believe in a female deity or a transgender deity who will be born of this universe, a sort of deus ex machina. And they believe that they need to build technology and so on to construct such a god it's truly insane but that is what they believe i looked into the like i said i read i read those jewish philosophers works philo judeus moses ben maimon you read those books and you figure them out man it's it's so weird it goes against everything that we find normal right right it's very funny how libs are calling israel fascist now <laughs> yeah Barely fly. Johannes, how are you, brother? Restore Europe. Yeah, I'm doing fine, man. Thoughts on Celtic nations? Mm, yeah, I'm half Celtic, so. <laughs> no, seriously. I had like, if you go back 2,000 years, half of my ancestors are from the region of south southwestern England, from the region of Bath. So I thought it was interesting. Uh, Celtic people, yeah. I would say. They used to have the druids, right? They were much more in tune with the with the occult and the magical and the mystical. And we've lost that kind of knowledge because I think the Romans rooted them out. The Romans went after the druids and killed them off. So we lost some interesting spiritual connections there. I wonder if it would be possible to bring that back. We might need it. Uh, how to mitigate the ethnic based conflict which is fired by the capitalism I don't know Celtic brother <laughs> why is Germany allowing the British and Americans to destroy their economy because Olaf Scholz uh, works for the Americans he's simply a CIA uh, operative you know Germany doesn't have any leadership. 
There was one attempt last year, December, by the Reichsbürger movement, uh, the uh, sovereign citizen movement, and they attempted to. Uh, <clears throat> they basically they were a bunch of boomers. They were nobility, noble boomers, but they were speaking about rebuilding something like the Holy Roman Empire on their telegram groups. They didn't actually do anything, but one of them apparently had some weapons in his garage, and so two hundred military officer, uh, police officers arrested these guys and, and jailed them. They're in jail now. That was the only, the only serious attempt the Germans have ever had in recent times of you know, bringing back the, uh, the empire, the, the Deutsche Reich, the German empire. And other than that, you know. <clears throat> Do you think the active clubs are real or honeypots? They're honeypots. Yeah, I, ex I explained that before. Uh, the active club network is obviously NATO military intel and CIA because they want they need meat for the meat grinder in Ukraine and they like white guys if they if they can make you believe that the Slavic people are the inferior white people you have to go and kill them then, while your countries are being flooded with Africans and Arabs right 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 great idea bro hey you can join those active clubs if you can infiltrate the leadership and lead them yourself and make sure that you know that the real enemy is here in our own countries. It's diversity, it's Islam, it's the LGBT. If you make that very clear to everybody, go ahead, take over those clubs. But don't assume that the leadership that is there now is somehow on your side. You know? I would not assume they are. No, we're not doomed. I don't like this kind of negative thought. No, our only hope is that we rise again. Yeah, we will rise again. It's not, it's not impossible to do anyway. With the help of Father Winter, the cost of living and the heating cost in Europe could become so expensive, million, hundreds of millions of people will have to leave anyway. And so do you think those tropical ones will stay in Europe when everything's freezing for six months a year? I don't think so, no. Uh -huh. So... Uh, how to organize in a way that avoids what happened to those Germans but still be effective. Um, yeah, I was already thinking about this. You need to learn to communicate without using electronic communication. No cell phones, no apps, no Telegram, no WhatsApp. How do you do that? Well, you just have to s meet regularly, say, in the woods or in a forest where you p pretend to play football or soccer or whatever. You play uh, sports together in the woods every Saturday morning and then, you know, after you've done with the sports, you have a good hour long conversation with each other about how to plan for things, but you got to do it offline. This is the most crucial advice I can give. If you want to get organized, you have to do it offline, nothing on paper, no, no digital trail. Maybe you can send letters sometimes like, you know, use a pigeon. <laughs> um, you can make notes on paper, I suppose, because if you have a notebook, and you can have it full of your secret notes. You know what's so great about a notebook? You can set fire to it, and then it's gone. But if you post something on your Telegram, you, you think you can delete your message, but Telegram still has your message. The data server still have it. The NSA still has it. CIA still has it. You really can't use... Uh, this is going to be difficult, yeah. But remember, before the Internet, every revolution was organized without the Internet. All right? Before phones... Every revolution was organized without phones. So keep that in mind that it's not impossible. It's just a skill. It's a skill that we have to learn and relearn. How do we organize a resistance, a rebellion, without using a paper trail, without using a digital trail? Well, lots of questions here. So most, most people don't understand that. Yeah. So... Do you have any advice for someone that wants to repatriate to Central Europe? I think if you want to do it today, you're going to probably have to get a job somehow, and then you can come. Usually they will give you a work visa, like in Hungary or something. If you have, a, if you have job credentials and you have an actual job lined up, then I'm sure they will allow you to come if you're qualified, right? But if you have no diplomas and no qualifications and you really don't know how to do anything, it's going to be a bit more difficult. Then they'll just take Muslims, see? Because they're cheaper. So have you heard of their Dritte Weg? I'll check it out. I haven't really looked in. I heard of it, but I haven't looked into it yet. 
I don't, usually these things in Germany are all controlled opposition, like AFD, Alternative for Deutschland, and so on. Yeah. No platform is secure. Exactly. You have, you have, you really have to learn to do the offline. See, okay, I'm speaking to you through the TikTok live, right? And this isn't the issue because I'm not discussing uh, plans. Are we going to do this at you know five o'clock? Uh, february 25th or something we, those kinds of things when you want to do something it cannot be discussed online anywhere ever it has to be offline all right you are a good man that cares for his people in a genuine way extremely honorable thank you carlos el nino If Germans want to put Germans first, they get villainized. Yeah, we all are. Everybody in all our countries were being villainized, you know. Uh. I have living relatives in Ireland. They live on a farm with 18 kids. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Did you see the Tucker Carlson segment about mass censorship campaign? Yeah mass censorship i don't really know i think tucker i don't trust him i think he is cia secret service i think he's uh he also speaks to you about interdimensionals and aliens and that's why i thought okay this guy is a crackpot you know <laughs> let's all do basket weaving together while we discuss taking over europe take back europe and you can have a knitting club that would be such a good cover a knitting club for men right and then all you do is talk about taking back europe <laughs> hey Jonas, do you think eastern europe is or will be a better place to live than the west uh the big cities definitely are uh, someone told me that at least in Poland the capital is still like white whereas places like Milan London Brussels Amsterdam Rotterdam Paris it's all it's all lost man it's all gone man what segment despise how oh, the alien stuff yeah Poland, Poland still has hussar parades. Well, that's excellent. Yeah, man, but the, the United States took over Poland. They, they changed the government. It was really a coup or, or like a government takeover. Fake elections, whatever. And then before you know it, you have um, uh, the LGBT. They have now a committee in Poland to promote LGBT in, in kindergarten classrooms and so on. And what else are they doing? They have now, you know, it's just so weird. Just so weird. Good evening. Free Europe, exactly. Yeah, the World Economic Forum agendas. That's our mission. I think they really want to depopulate the Earth by making people infertile, because they learned from the past, right? They learned from the, uh, you know, the, uh, the 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 gulags in Soviet Russia. They tried to kill I don't know, 50 million people. 50 million white people died in the gulags. Think about that. Think about it. We always speak of the 6 million. No one speaks of the 50 million in the gulags, you know? Insane. You know, and then they killed all these people, but then very quickly, the women of Russia, they had enough births to replenish their population very quickly. And so now they realize, okay, we can't kill them off in gulags because that's just very temporary. Oh no, we have to make them infertile. And that's why they give you the LGBT and the castrations and the, and the child-free lifestyle and so on, you know? Yeah, I heard about the French law against COVID-19 criticism, yeah. It's just, it's just completely insane. And you'll, you'll just have to do it anonymously, but you'll still have to do it. Like I said, try it offline with posters or something, but don't get caught. Check for cameras first. Always go on a reconnaissance mission first. Like have your little brother or so walk through town and have him record with his camera where there are cameras. And then you can map out a path where you can walk without being seen. <laughs> now, seriously, it sounds stupid, but man, we have all sorts of skills to acquire here. You need to be able to do secret mission, missions without being seen by the urban cameras. How do you do that? You need some kind of camouflage suits so you won't be recognized. Or with the facial detection cameras. So you need some kind of facial camouflage. For example, is there a way 
to paint something on your face. Maybe what if you would paint a QR code on your face? Would it fool the uh, facial recognition cameras? We have so much to learn, but we really need to start learning these kinds of things. Yeah. Seed oils, yeah, I heard about it. I don't eat them anymore. I have a mostly meat and dairy diet with some occasional fruit and vegetables, but you know, it's the main component is dairy and meat. Yeah, it's getting bad in the USA. Yeah, I know it's getting bad everywhere here. Like we're in this together, and it's like I said, the the peoples of America and the United States, they're not the problem. It's it's clearly the leadership doing this. But then, you know, you need to do something about it. Uh, you're French? Great. Nemesis? <laughs> nemesis, nemesis. Uh, seed oils, yeah. France is lost, you know, the big cities. Paris is lost, definitely. Yeah, it's so weird. Hey, hello, sir. You're from Croatia? Okay, great from, great people from Croatia. Listen and learn. Speaking facts, yes. So, uh, I think Europe will economically collapse and dismember it if this continues, yeah. We will have to do something about it, you know. A new French Revolution. The whole of Europe needs a French Revolution. It's going to be, uh, you know. Yeah, by the way, if you want to follow my uh, my Substack newsletter, I send one out like three times a week or so. It's www.jmk.info. So check it out. <clears throat> you can subscribe as well if you want. Thoughts on skin ads. Isn't that like old, like 1980s or something? I saw the movie American History X, you know, but you know, isn't that like a music more has more more to do with music than with anything else? That was my opinion. Don't they listen to ska music or something? What do the Dutch people think of your views? They call me paranoid or uh, you know fantastical, like a fantast. Like I, they think I'm making stuff up. They have no idea that I'm dead serious. Most of, them, most of them don't believe it. They say, is this a sketch? Is this comedy? Is this satire? No, dude, this is real. They just don't get it. They're very childish, childlike. Hey, hey wish you all the best. Love your continent. Yes, thank you very much. Anti-Semitic. <laughs> Great usernames here as usual. Are you an AFD fan? I think the alternative for Deutschland may be controlled opposition again. They say they want to re-migrate these migrants, right? But then the leadership, this woman, Alice Weidel, she's lesbian and she's in a relationship with this brown woman from India. And I'm thinking, okay, when do we start promoting proper morals again? Isn't that where, where we start? Are whites becoming a minority? When the new, by 2050, we should be a minority in almost every country in the West, yeah. Yeah, Murdoch, Murdoch was very funny. Yeah. Uh, I think Gert Wilders is controlled opposition, yeah. I think his mother was Jewish and his father was Muslim, so he's a bit of a weirdo. Love the Calcutta meat. Okay. What do you think about AI replacing replacing people's jobs in about no more than ten years' time? What can AI really do? You know, uh, so far it's more like video editing and and th those kinds. Of, it's more automation. You know, they they call it artificial intelligence, but it's really just automation and uh, not really intelligence. They. I watched a video by a Jap uh, Asian researcher said that, well, AI was trained on the articles of the New York Times, but through the interaction with average people, AI actually got dumber. Seriously, because normal people interact with AI, the AI got stupider. So that's very weird. It means that AI can only be as good as the material that it is trained on. And if that's the New York Times, then it's not intelligent. Yeah, Europeans need more babies. Well, we, we first have to deal with the um, the baby boomer generations, the old people, 
because they're occupying the homes that those young people will need. So we need to get, do something about the, uh, we need to do something about the, the baby boomers in our country. Why do they need to lobotomize every AI so it doesn't become racist? <laughs> because apparently people are naturally racist and it feeds off of that and then they have to censor it every, everything again. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, sad. Is white polygamy a partial solution? You mean one man with multiple women? You know, all I know is that in, in European history, only the leadership sometimes had multiple wives, but in generally the peasants had one wife. So it's not like I think this should be normalized because then, you know, what are you doing? You're, this is what Islam does. Do we want to be that way or do we want to do it the Christian way? So I prefer the Christian way, you know. Yeah, the boomer generation, they cause everything. What do we do with the boomers? What shall we do with the baby boomers? What shall we do with the baby boomers? What shall we do with the baby boomers? Early in the morning. Malta, I don't know. Yeah, the, the boomer generations, they will leave. They will be gone, you know. You know, the thing with pagans is it's okay for them to have this emotional, spiritual connection. That is most important anyway. As long as you understand that in our communication with uh, uh, other European peoples, we act as Christians, so to speak. Outward we can be pagans inwardly and outwardly Christian. I don't see any problem with this. The thing is that we need to understand that as Europeans, we need something to unite us. And we have nothing. Europeans don't speak the same language. We don't have the same ethnicities. We are different. You know, German people, white Germans are ethnically very different from white Spaniards. You know, very different people. Nothing ever united us except Christianity. So under the, under the banner or under the, uh, the cross of Christianity, we will march together even if in your heart you may feel pagan. It's, it's no problem to me, you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter if not all boomers are bad. It matters that their generation hoards all the wealth to the point where the young generations, the millennials, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, they can't get homes anymore because the boomers, they rent them out. The boomers have six homes. They rent five out for $3,000 a month and the generations Z and Alpha can't afford them. And that's just wrong. It's just so wrong. It forces young people to live in a pod when these boomers have these massive houses with 20 bedrooms it's antisocial. Yeah, the paganists, the pagan people in Europe, they were Christianized. They were converted to Christian Christianity by the sword. Usually, a lot of violence and blood was shed, but that's what happens. You know, that's what happened. I know that the Catholic, the Roman Catholics, at some point started hunting down the female seeresses. You know, you know when they speak of the witch burnings, the witch burnings. It's not what you think it was. You, you want to, they told you that they were just burning old women for no reason. Uh, first of all, in all of Germany, they were burning about one woman per month in all of Germany. Okay, that's not exactly a genocide, but who were these women? Who were these witches? I think they were the spiritual leaders of the Germanic peoples, the heathen seeresses, the prophetesses, the, prof the ones with the prophecies. I think that's what they were. That's, those were the women they called witches and they burnt them, yeah. So to root out the pagan spiritual connection. And I think, you know, like I said, I wouldn't do that anymore. I want that spiritual connection. We need the spiritual connection with our people so that we know that we have the right to exist here. This is our land. We're not leaving. Yeah, the boomers made all the wrong decisions. That's absolutely true, you know. It will be better for the world if Europeans were strong again. That's my idea, yeah. It's your idea as well. I'll take your idea. It's to make Europe strong again, mentally and physically. I keep saying that, but that's what we need to do. And then, of course, we will have a new culture that will be strong, a culture of strength and beauty where we care about artisan artisanship, you know, the artists who make nice things, right? And we put our, our soul back into our architecture and our art and statues. But it can be something very different as well. It doesn't have to be statues and paintings anymore. It can be something new, you know, and where we unleash our spiritual energy, so to speak. Yeah, look at what happened to Catholicism now. You know, Pope Francis is a Jew, so there you go.
I think Christians will understand the spiritual connection to our lands. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. Blood and soil, blut und Boden. Yeah, Gen Z men. Yeah, the boys are men. Sorry, men are more conservative than the millennials. Yeah, definitely. But the women of all these generations, they're becoming more and more leftist. And I wonder why that is. What are the women afraid of? They're afraid of losing wealth, luxury, money, status. Because once they lose that, you know, who's going to protect them? Who's going to fight for them? No one. They messed up. But I think half the women, the half the white women, they will join the right wing men eventually. But the other half may have a bit of a problem. They might not. We might. You might simply have to write them off. Is it because I'm drinking the the water or something? Is that why you think? There's nothing in my tap water. It's fine here. The hedonism in young people is crazy. Well, you know they can't afford families and homes, so what are they going to do all day? You know, get drunk and depressed and play video games and smoke smoke shit. I don't think Germany has any good parties, gambler's dilemma. I think Germany is entirely controlled by the U.S. and nothing real is allowed there. It will be shut down immediately. Oh, good books. Yeah, active clubs are controlled. But you can take over the leadership if you can. Go and take over the leadership. But don't expect the leadership to be on your side. They may be, you know, weirdos. We have many women joining the fight here in Pro Portugal. Yeah, great. We. This is my my point. You know, you need the women on board. So you need to have a movement that the women can support, also openly. It's very important that women can do that. So you're gonna have to give women something. What do women want? They want housing. Women want housing. So promise them housing. Give them housing. Fight for the housing. Give these women housing. Right. Then, you, then they will support you in return. Because if the socialists and the Democrats promise them housing, but they not, they're not delivering, and if you as a right-wing outfit promise the women housing and you deliver, the women will definitely support you, so you don't have to be afraid of that. We need to give women housing. I think I'm going to make another video sometimes about good books that I recommend. I don't know if I can do it right now. I might do it right now. I have this Zotero app where I store all the books I've read so I can basically go through some things, but it might be too much. It could be a... Now I'll do that another time because I have to read a lot. No. Someone asks, how can I actually make a difference? I think in the real world, you will want to find at least one or two other people that you can talk to about these right wing kind of things and start making plans, but do it offline. No digital trail, no email, no WhatsApp, no Telegram, nothing. It has to be offline. So you meet each other at, a, at your favorite pub or something, or you meet each other at your soccer after a soccer match or something, whatever. But spend some hour a week together just talking about what can we do for the resistance? What can, how can we do this? What can we plan for? How can we prepare for trouble? You know? But do it offline because you do not want to be arrested for talking about them, something, right? Now, if you do something, and you get caught. That's your problem. But talking about it, you, you, you do it offline if you want to get serious. Yeah? No, I don't have a public reading list uh, like Goodreads. I do have my books on Goodreads.com. Uh, maybe I can post a link. My own books, of course. But... I don't even know where I left it. Okay. <laughs> Here, I have the Goodreads link. Rick. Author profile. Mm, here's my link to my own book. Oh, wait, I can't post it. Okay, no, I can't post it. No matter, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to make a video about, my, uh, about the books I would recommend. I'll take some time for it because there's a few books that are just excellent and that i would recommend to everybody in our movement i'll do that another time 
So Germany is sending Ukraine long-range weapons. Yeah, you know, the West has been sending everything they've got to Ukraine. One thing that means Europe today cannot defend itself. If the Arab nations would, would the, and Turkey, if Turkey, just Turkey, would decide to attack Europe and invade Europe now, invade Germany, Germany would not be able to defend, would not be able to defend itself. So I'm wondering when that will happen. Because I don't trust Turkey and I don't trust the, the Arabs. If they want to invade Europe, they can just go ahead now because we don't have weapons to defend ourselves. Walkie talkies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any thoughts on Sweden? Yeah. Uh, I love the Swedish nature. Yeah. But the Swedish people, they. They're being fooled by the media. Everybody outside of Sweden thinks that Swedish people are all super far left and they love immigration. But I think privately Swedish people don't like this at all. But it's, you know, you need to take over your uh, SVT or what's it called, your Swedish television. They're such propagandists, such liars. Belgium, man. Belgium is such a messed up country. You have so many Muslims. It's not normal. Mm, death metal, yeah, maybe not so much. I used to listen more to uh, techno stuff as uh, throughout my life, but you know, I do like Rammstein. Yeah, well, l r right. I will spread my ideas through TikTok, but there's a difference between your ideas, your ide ideology, which I can talk about on TikTok, and then there's the actual plan to do something. You cannot talk about that online anywhere ever. Most people have communist ideas without really knowing it. Yeah, I suppose so. I think that's because a lot of people just want something for themselves. They just want, you know, subsidies and social ho socialized housing. And they don't really want to fight for their nation or something. That's too far-fetched for them, right? What does your idea of an ideal society look like? The Republic by Plato. <laughs> uh, no, we turn Europe into a Christian Sparta based on supporting our own peoples it would be heavily nationalist when i say europe it means each country will be like a christian republic or a christian sparta like something like a holy roman empire where you still have the nations intact and the thing is uh we need to become intolerant religiously intolerant about people trying to subvert us and you know a book review video maybe i'll do that sometime yeah I love the comment section. I have to say you guys you guys are great, informative, supportive. Because if I would do this on my Dutch channel, I would just get nothing but uh, complainers and people calling me insane. But here at least we can talk quite seriously about what we want to do. You know? Yeah, Ukraine is just a money laundering operation. Yeah, it probably is. Do you think, you know, after they killed Navalny, do you think they're going to throw uh, Zelensky under the, under the bus next and then blame Putin, right? I wonder. Yeah, they don't. Uh, turns out in Ukraine, there are actually NATO people, NATO staff dressed as mercenaries from, from France and from England. They are already there operating a lot of the equipment that the Ukrainians don't know how to use exactly. You know? No, of course, race matters. Rico, of course, race matters. You know, you have the what originally in Europe, we have the Germanic people, Slavic people, Celtic people, like the Nordic Germanics as well, the Nordic people and the Romance people. And perhaps you can also include the Greek in my view, you know, and there may be some um, special people like there's in Spain, there's some special people. I don't know what they're called anymore, but that's it, you know. You, no, how can how can an African be a good European if they're not even a good African? That's the first problem. You know that's nonsense. It's just total nonsense. The USA is bankrupt and squeezing the EU. That's that's what they're doing exactly. They're squeezing us out. You know, Denmark wants to send all of their artillery to Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 defenseless. But increasingly, people get arrested in the UK for hate speech online. Yeah, like I said, do it offline. Try to find your uh, your allies offline.
Sparta, yeah. Sparta was actually pretty good. There, I have one book recommendation about Sparta for everybody here. Uh, let me look it up. All right, I gotta go to search. Sparta and its law. Sparta and its law, written by Eduardo Velasco, and a Spaniard. Spaniard wrote it here. Let me uh, type it in. Eduardo Velasco, Sparta and its law. This is a pretty damn good book if you want to get acquainted with, you know, warrior masculinity, masculinity, masculine warrior cults. It's such a good book. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Europe has always been diverse. So you can't make us diverse by sending the same Muslims to all of our countries. That doesn't make us diverse. That makes us Muslim. We don't want that. Thoughts on euthanasia. Ridiculous. They're killing young people too now. Yeah? Anybody who doesn't feel like they want to live anymore gets the, gets the jibby-jab now. I wasn't sure about Thierry Baudet from the Netherlands. He's like from the FVD, the Forum for Democracy. Yeah. Uh, don't know what to think about him. <clears throat> America first. What's that? Is that Charlie Kirk and so on? The thing with Baudet is Thierry Baudet, I agree with almost all of his points of views it's pretty good you know pretty solid yeah but as a person i don't really don't really trust him or like him that much but you know so migrants here in portugal are only receiving benefits the most of them but the natives are losing it yeah they're taking it from the natives they did this meloni in italy did the same thing she took benefits from the native from the lower white white working classes and gave it to the immigrants it's just such a crime What do you think the Americans should do? The American white middle class needs to prepare for the following. You're going to lose the big cities. They will be ruled, dominated by the inner city blacks with the help of their Jewish handlers, right? Because they're not doing this on their own. But you will lose access to this. And you need to make sure that you can have farms and, and farm, you know, fertile farmland that you can defend. Because there's no point in having farmland if you can't defend it, right? Uh, run for the hills. You will be safe in the Appalachians. You know, any any high ground is actually safe because governments find it too costly to police those territories anyway. <clears throat> uh, no, seriously, you may lose the southern states of the U.S. Like Texas is like what thirty five percent white at this point. You're going to lose those places to to the immigrants, and especially because of their births. It's more like in the in the northern states of the U.S. Central Central Northern states. That's where you have the highest white birth rate still. That would be your heartland, the white heartland of the Americas. And part of Canada would be together. You know, it's, it's largely places where you have Mormons and uh, the Amish people. Those territories, however, is uh, where white people will survive in the end. The Azov Battalion is owned by the Jew Igor Kolomoisky. Oh, he he got arrested. So whoever it is now, but anyway, the whole con the whole military in the in Ukraine is all run by Jews, man. It's, it's pointless. No, I looked into an er Nick Fuentes, but he's not a very sincere fellow. You know, I, I'm not a good match for talking to him. I think he's also like a woman hater. <clears throat> That's not for me. I don't support that. Yeah, Maloney was such a sellout. Horrible woman. Good thing about most of the immigrants coming to the U.S. is that they are Christian, at least. Yeah, Catholic, Christian, I suppose, yeah. I mean, lots of these Hispanic people, they are just minimally, minimally uh, native anyway. They're largely, uh, you know, Spaniards with some native influ influences. But it's not like, you know, it's not, to me, it's never a purity contest, but, you know, uh, why are the blacks in charge then? If black people in the USA are 13% of the population, why are they now like 50% of your mayors? Because somebody is putting them in charge, right? This isn't right. You need to do something about this, you know? 
Yeah, the leadership in Europe is also absolutely horrible. The Christian immigrants' children will mostly be atheists now. I don't know. All right, I've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. I'm going to do this show regularly, like once a week on every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Uh, West European time. Uh, you can go to my uh, newsletter at www.jmk.info. And oh, what else do I have? My uh, YouTube channel at The Great Johannes. There you can also rewatch my interview with Sofia Aragona. And uh, well, I'll see you next week, then, right?